Good evening and welcome. This is our third annual alumni alumni panel organized by the School of Communication, Arts and Media, known as SOCAM, within the College of Arts and Sciences. My name is Katherine Schwab and I'm director of SOCAM and professor of art history and visual culture in the Department of Visual and Performing Arts. This event was made possible thanks to the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. I am grateful to Associate Dean and Professor of Biology, Glenn Sauer, for joining us this evening. Four departments comprise SOCAM, Communication, English, Modern Languages and Literatures, and Visual and Performing Arts. Special thanks go to SOCAM colleagues for their assistance this evening. Professor Maurice Rose, Sarah Diaz, Adam Rugg, and Matt Tullis. I'm also grateful to Dion Gray Wilson, SOCAM coordinator, for handling many details. We are very glad to partner with undergraduate admissions and alumni relations, and to welcome admitted students for the class of 2024. For our current students in attendance this evening, be sure to meet Kim Nikolenko in the back and Steph Gallo from our Academic and Career Development Center. They are exceptionally helpful as you explore internships and make the transition from student to your professional careers. Additional upcoming alumni panels include Humanities at Work on March 18th and Modern Languages and Literatures on March 25th. There are flyers available for the March 25th panel. Don't miss them. As we know, students from the College of Arts and Sciences are tremendously successful in building careers across a wide spectrum of fields. Students in the liberal arts are particularly sought by employers because of their capacity to synthesize information, use critical thinking skills, and to communicate effectively in speaking and writing. Six months after graduation from the College of Arts and Sciences, 98% have begun full-time employment, graduate or professional school, or service work. This is a phenomenally high number, and it speaks to the quality of the Jesuit tradition and education we offer at Fairfield University through the College of Arts and Sciences. In the forthcoming hour, we will hear individually from our four panelists, followed by Q&A from the audience. Please save your questions for the Q&A portion. We will have time at the end for you to come up and talk individually with our speakers. The printed program on your chair provides short bios to help you learn more about our panelists who exemplify the opportunities to major and minor within and across SOCAM departments as well as schools of the university. Please join me in welcoming back to campus Amanda Hajar at the far end, digital content manager with the New York Knicks, John Primavera, internal business affairs manager at Columbia Artists, Maggie Andrews, social media editor at Yahoo Entertainment and Lifestyle, and Alexandra Ambrosio, account coordinator with the Camuto Group. There we go. So I have asked them to self-select who will lead off. And I'll just let you go ahead. I'm going to be timing you. That's my job now. So I will signal if you need to kind of wrap it up for the next person to begin. OK. Sounds good. All right, I guess I'll go first. So I'm Maggie, I'm from the class of 2014. Um, a little background is that I'm an English journalism major and a Spanish minor. So when I was a student here, I had internships at Us Weekly and O the Oprah Magazine. But when I graduated, I decided I didn't immediately wanna jump into my career. So I went to Spain and I actually taught English in Spain for two years. So a lot of people tried to advise me against it or say that I would miss out if I didn't get straight into my career but I would also advise you guys to take advantage of different opportunities. I can't tell you how many times that's come up in interviews and people have been very impressed, especially as a journalism background, you have to be able to talk and converse. And people really were impressed that I kind of had the guts to go abroad. Um, so when I came back from Spain, I actually took a volunteer opportunity with Team USA. 
it was right before the Rio Olympics and all the Olympians were going through Houston, Texas before they went down to Rio. And while I was there, I befriended the social media team. They actually needed someone to talk to Serena Williams and I was the only one that was brave enough to do it for some reason. And because of that, they actually offered me an internship. So it's the little experiences like that that you can't really study for that you have to take advantage of. So that's kind of a segue into the importance of networking. Um, but then once I worked for Team USA, I had an internship with them out in Colorado. I was then, um, I came back to New York and I got a job at People Magazine where I was a social media editor. And from there I moved to Yahoo and now I've been at Yahoo for the last two years. Um, so now I'm gonna go back to my notes. This is the part that I had to prepare for. Um, so I was an English journalism major, but really there was so much out there that I wish I had taken advantage of. Um, now I'm hiring interns and I really look beyond majors and minors to look into their skill set. When I was a student, I wish I had taken advantage of video editing classes and Photoshop. Those are huge skills that I now look for in every possible intern. My intern last summer was actually a fashion design student and she really made a compelling argument for why she wanted to work in social media, so we hired her based on that. Um, let's see. Successes. <laughs> Successes and failures are a huge part of obviously everyone's career. I've only been in the real world for about five years now, um, but I was actually twice told that it was my cover letter that landed me the job. Um, I like to use a lot of anecdotes, especially as an English journalism student. I was a strong writer and that's really made all the difference in my career. Social media is big on writing, but in a very concise way, and so that definitely comes into play in um, cover letters. My cover letter for Yahoo actually talked all about the crisis that I had when Harry and Meghan got engaged at five o'clock in the morning, and that was something that really stood out to my employer. She said she was selecting between 200 people, and that made her laugh, so that's kind of how I got the job in the end. Um, Again, starting out, you're definitely going to have failures. Um, social is the most outward-facing part of the brand, and I cannot tell you how many times I've seen a horrible comment asking what failed social media intern posted that on the page. So you develop a thick skin really quickly. Um, also, you have such a great support network here at Fairfield, but you don't really expect when you get in the real world that it is a competitive workplace. I'm a big proponent of um, tracking your own wins and being a huge advocate for yourself. Um, especially when um, you have job reviews coming up. I say this as my midterm review is tomorrow. <laughs> um, and it's nice to have a list of wins and you can prove that this is exactly what you provide to the company and this is why you're an asset. Um, let's see. Changes in my field, in the field of social media, obviously it's always evolving. Um, I don't even think Fairfield offered classes in social media when I was a student, so there was really no way to study for it. Um, we actually just launched our TikTok page a month ago. I was not fluent in TikTok, nor is anyone on my team, so that was a huge learning curve. But the part of social media is that you do have to go kind of roll with the punches. Um, when I started even three years ago, a huge part of our job was Facebook traffic. Um, but with algorithm changes, there's nothing you can really do to prepare for anything. So my role is kind of evolving into more of a marketing and brand positioning role. We now work with the commerce team, we work with marketing, we look for different dark social opportunities, which are really the branded posts that you see that hopefully you don't even realize we're trying to sell you something. Um, so yes, that is my job in a nutshell. <laughs> cool. um, my name is John Primavera. I was class of 2005 at Fairfield, and I studied marketing and music while I was here. I originally started um, just in the business school, and I had not expected to have a music major, but after taking a few classes here, um, and after having appreciated it and participated in it my whole life, I realized I was really enjoying studying classical music. Um, and I'm really glad I added it as a major. And um, <clears throat> after a stint after graduation where I had an opportunity to work with the Visual and Performing Arts Department for five years, which was a great first opportunity for me, um, I was able to sort of combine those two majors. I did a grad graduate program in arts administration where I studied the more specific um, nonprofit arts management, uh, but also a program that allowed me to get an MBA, so, which, so that kept me um, getting a more general degree. Um, and so my music major played a part in where I am today. I'm at Columbia Artists, which is a talent agency in New York City, um, and we work in the fields of classical music and theatrical productions. 
Um, but the point being about majors is that um, they, they served as a jumping off point for me, but my job now at Columbia Artists involves very different work than anything that I studied at all. So um, I was able to sort of make a transition on the job once my majors helped me uh, get into a particular field. Um, so at Columbia Artists, um, as, as a, a company of talent agents, we manage both the careers of solo artists like uh, conductors and pianists and singers, and we tour Broadway shows, we tour music and dance groups, orchestras, and in an interesting kind of newer uh, segment of the industry, we license um, live to film concerts. And an example of that would be you go see a showing of, say, Harry Potter or um, Batman, or in our case, often Disney or Star Wars feature films, and orchestras playing the score live in sync with the film while you're watching and hearing the dialogue. It's a pretty cool um, thing, but more importantly, it's um, a growing part of the industry, which is um, <clears throat> in the arts. I mean, we're often trying to preserve the classical art forms, but at the same time in the arts business, we're always looking for places of growth and sustainability um, when you're trying to, to stay alive. Um, but to explain a little more specifically my transition within the company to diff a different kind of work, um, I'll give you a little bit of specifics that I started uh, in a department uh, where we were managing opera singers. I was um, doing some basic support tasks and day to day using this sort of mundane uh, software that the company had designed for itself, had custom built, and I realized I had a lot of ideas about, well, if the software was new, it was still a work in progress, ideas about how my and my colleagues across the company's work could be uh, done more intuitively and efficiently. And so I took advantage of some opportunities by offering to be on a committee to give feedback about this new software and help them develop it. Eventually, I sort of jumped at the chance to take on a little responsibility with it, and, and that sort of snowballed over time and evolved into where I am now. You know, at some point, the overall administration took a little notice, and I'm now in a position where I'm overseeing a variety of systems for the whole company at a corporate level. Uh, and that includes both digital systems, but also like people-based systems. What are we doing? Are we doing it efficiently enough? And are we getting it all done? Um, so it was, I'm in a very different place now in terms of the work that I do. But again, it was, uh, you know, my sort of areas of study were a jumping off point, And it's sort of an example of um, how you can get experience on the job. This all happened after I started there. And I've been at Columbia Artists six years now. Um, I have another little story about uh, how I got hired to network and I think we'll talk about in a few minutes. So that's a little background on me. Hi, everyone. I'm Alexandra. I graduated this past May. I, oh, sorry. Um, I studied public relations and I minored in marketing and Italian studies. I originally came in as a marketing major, but then I decided to go the PR and comm route just because I could always add marketing as my minor, but I think when you have a communication degree at the forefront, you become more appealing to employers. So I graduated in May, and I was so set on having a job right after graduation because I thought, like, that's why you go to college, to get a job right after. So I interned throughout my Fairfield experience at Refinery29, which is a website based in New York City. It's lifestyle, beauty, things like that. And I also interned at Group 9 Media. And both companies were completely media driven and I thought that's ultimately what I wanted to do. Um, I was waiting for a job offer from both companies and Refinery was the one that gave me the offer first even though I wanted to go with Group 9 Media but I was nervous that they weren't going to give me an offer so I went with the first choice which was Refinery and I worked there upon graduation so from May to October and then I realized that even though I'd interned at media companies all throughout my college experience, that wasn't really the route that I wanted to go. I couldn't see myself doing that for the rest of my life. So I was looking for other jobs and a Fairfield graduate who was in one of my communication classes reached out to me on Instagram actually and she was like, my company's hiring, do you wanna come in um, and see if you like it? Like the 
my boss now is actually a Fairfield graduate. So I went in, and this is where I am now, it's Camuto Group, and I met with uh, Brian, who graduated a long time ago. Um, but he, we really had a great conversation, a great interview. I think the fact that we had the Fairfield similarity was a great talking point, but we also were able to relate on a lot of different things. So I'm at Camuto Group. It is a production house for brands like Lucky Brand, Jessica Simpson, Corso Como, and we just actually launched the Jennifer Lopez collection at DSW. So I am an account coordinator, so I work with a variety of departments, um, buyers, sales rep, credit teams, um, and DSW as a whole because they are kind of our management. Um, I decided that I was ultimately really happy with the kind of career path change that I made because I'd always known that I wanted to go in the fashion industry and with a communication and public relation major, you really are more, you can basically get any job you want because you have those people skills, you have the marketing skills. So whoever is a common PR major, give you major props. Um, successes and failures, I would have to say that I kind of thought my biggest success was that I got a job right after graduation, but then like thinking about it, I'm like, well, I didn't like that job, so that's a failure. But I think uh, um, that you just have to remind yourself, like you don't need a job right upon graduation. Like you have internships under your belt. Explore what you want to explore. Like there's so many different fields, there's so many different companies, and you really can take your time. Um, changes in the field. So we are basic, we're the production house for a lot of different brands and all of our production is done in China. Obviously, basically everything you wear says made in China on it. So a change in our field right now is the coronavirus. So since a lot of the factories in China are closed, we're having to deal with all of the ramifications that that comes with. So we're having to move our production to Ethiopia and to Brazil. So it's always like thinking rapidly on your feet, like JLo's collection launches in April. How are we gonna get all those shoes to America in time? So um, I think a change also in the communication and PR world is obviously social media is always changing. So as we are millennials, I think we just have to keep on top with the trends. And I know that Fairfield has a variety of different courses. I know some of my favorites were mass media and society and advertising. Um, so just take advantage of all the classes that Fairfield offers, even if it's not in your major or minor requirement, because they're going to benefit you in some way. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Amanda Hajar. I graduated in 2017. Uh, to the accepted students, congrats. Everyone says it's an exciting time, but I think it's more of a stressful time. Uh, it'll eventually be an exciting time, I promise. Um, so I actually came in as a biology major, probably for the wrong reasons. Um, all of my friends went into nursing, and I had, you know, my uncle was a doctor, and I was like, oh, you know, it's interesting what he does. I want to help people, but I was never really in it for the right reasons, which means that I was just not cut out to be a biology major. Um, I had a great natural writing ability, I, you know, decent people skills that I needed to harness those natural abilities. To make a long story short, uh, the summer of my junior year, I actually changed to be a digital journalism major. Uh, and I was petrified that I was not going to graduate on time. I spent two years in a lab for six hours twice a week. Uh, and I wasn't sure what internship I was going to get, what skills that I just gained um, was going to be translatable to this new field. Uh, I had a great team of advisors and professors who helped kind of get me up to speed. I uh, ended up finishing early, which I didn't mean to, so I had to take four classes to be a full-time student senior year. Anyway, so I finished early. Um, I took a bunch of amazing classes, and I was fortunate enough to land a job at ESPN coming out of graduation. Um, and I think the note on that is, you know, you don't have to land the perfect job or any job, uh, to my other panelists' point, right after graduation. I think there's a lot of pressure when you're in college of everyone's talking about the internships they're doing, everyone's talking about the connections they have or the people that they're going to talk to or network to. And I think part of my advice to that would just be you have your own path and you have your own career and your own interests. Uh, and that's really the value 
of what you bring to your own life and not to worry about what others are doing at their stage in their career. Um, I had an internship at CBS in Boston, where I'm from, um, which did not lead to a full-time position. That's fine. Uh, a lot of my friends, they were like, yep, they hired me, I'm good. Uh, so I was a bit worried, but um, anyway, back to jumping back to my career, I worked at ESPN uh, for about 11 months and I really wanted to live in the city. So I applied to everything and anywhere in the city, which I don't always recommend because there were some questionable things that I applied to. Uh, I landed a job at Madison Square Garden in their marketing partnerships department. I had no idea what partnerships was. Uh, I had no idea what a P&L was or revenue was. Uh, but what I did have was a base that Fairfield helped me create of common sense, a motor, um, a willingness to learn, and a solutions-based mindset, which I can't stress enough how important that is. I think a lot of people are great at pointing out the problem, uh, but you want to be the person that finds a solution. So my role was literally business solutions coordinator, uh, which ranged from helping current partners out to working with account management to finding out what, what packages fit around the Knicks and the Rangers uh, for sponsorship, as well as working with new business and new sales pitches. Um, which kind of segues into networking. So through that role, I made a lot of connections within the company um, with event presentation, community relations, digital and social, um, marketing, so on and so forth. Uh, and that's when a role opened up on the Knicks digital team, which I honestly found out through networking. So it really, it doesn't stop. And the thing about networking, I think, at least when I was going through it at Fairfield, I was like, networking seemed to me as you meet someone and then you later on ask them for a job. And I was like, that doesn't seem organic, but <laughs> it's more so just building relationships. Um, you don't have to know what you wanna do, but you can understand what other people do and see if that applies to you in any way. Um, and if it doesn't, great, you just learned something. Uh, so that's really what I wanted to take is going through this business solutions role opened me up to a lot of different areas around the company. Uh, and I eventually, I actually just started in December as a digital content manager for the New York Knicks which has its headaches, uh, as you can imagine, and its successes as well. So it's very interesting, it's very fun. We were just in Chicago with RJ for um, NBA All-Star Weekend, and we get right back into game coverage. So our, our responsibilities really range from the business side of it to branded posts, sponsored content, to editorial, to live game coverage and live event coverage, and then the larger NBA platforms like Draft, Lottery, um, Summer League, so on and so forth, hopefully playoffs someday. Um, so yeah, that's, that, would, that would be my advice. I think I, let me see if I missed anything here. I didn't look down at this once. Uh, oh, everyone says where do you want to be in five years? It's okay if you don't know the answer to that question. Um, all you need is a motor and a willingness to learn and that drive to you know, be better than the day before and you'll all figure it out, I promise. <laughs> We have an opportunity to ask them to reflect on and share with you specific anecdotes or an anecdote uh, concerning a networking contact experience, something that perhaps was pivotal to your personal experience. And I know, John, you, you have something, you've got something you're thinking about. Maggie, did you, did you have something you wanted to lead off with, or should we lead off with John? <laughs> sure. John. Okay. Um, it's really just a little story about how I got the job originally at my current company. Um, I had, during my graduate program, I had maybe four or five internships or part-time work experiences at different arts companies doing a variety of different things. And one of them, I was lucky enough to, over one summer, do a few like very insignificant jobs for the Metropolitan Opera. Um, this was during their downtime, and I really was just getting some behind the scenes, um, you know, a little information on what, what goes on there behind the scenes. Um, now, if you're not so familiar, the Met Opera, it's one of the biggest nonprofit arts organizations in the country and one of the most highly regarded uh, opera companies internationally. And I say that just because uh, to set up that, I had um, a couple very brief interactions with an executive there who's in charge of the whole uh, artistic division and I worked mainly with his assistant and other departments, and I thought you know, not much of these conversations I may have had with him. Um, but fast forward to a year and a half later after I finished grad school, I had been applying to jobs for a number of months and nothing really coming to fruition, and I get a call from someone at my current company who apparently works with this executive closely, uh, was looking to hire someone, 
And the point is that the executive who I had this brief meeting with remembered a year and a half earlier who I was, that I you know, would be in the area looking for a job, and um, I just, that was completely unexpected to me. And this was coming from a company that I didn't have the company or the industry on my radar at all. So that's how I got the job where I am now. And I guess my advice is to just sort of approach each introduction or uh, potential relationship with an open mind because certainly in the arts and probably these other industries we're talking about tonight, uh, they're small industries and people will pop up in different places where you don't expect them. Sure. Um, I don't know if I should say this story. I'm just kidding. It's an interesting one because I was, again, I was a business solutions coordinator. I felt like I you know, learned a ton my first eight months there. And then I felt like I was you know, kind of leveling out, um, still liking what I was doing, but was starting to kind of be aware of, okay, what is my next step here? And I wanted it to be within the company because I did enjoy working for MSG. Um, so one of my, who's my boss now, he was a friend at the time. And we were both just having a really, really long day. Um, and we ran into each other. And he was like, oh, how's your day going? And I was like, oh, are you guys hiring? And he was like, uh, we might be. And that actually, <laughs> they opened up that position later on. But the point is that he and I worked together because he was working on the digital side and I was working on the sponsorship side. We, we uh, intersected a lot um, on what, what's working for partners, what's not working for partners. And a big part of that is just being proactive. Uh, there's a lot of email warriors out there who it just sometimes face to face is the best way to interact with someone. Um, so whenever you know we were working on a project together, he and I would always make it a point to get coffee, talk about it. I could see his side and he can see my side um, because ultimately, that's what any good relationship, in, including networking, is. Is you understand what they need to do and they understand what you need to do as a job, and then how can you meet in the middle? Um, so that's really what helped a lot. And I also, when I was kind of exploring what I wanted to do next, our event presentation team, who's basically in charge of all the music in arena, the encore contests or the on ice contests, um, anything that's playing or going on in arena, they are responsible for. It's basically their live show. Uh, I shadowed the director at a game. Um, I found out it was cool. It's not really what I wanted to do, but just taking those steps to go shadow someone within your department or within your team or within your company and just you know exploring it from there. Segwaying off that, <clears throat> there's also a huge um, opportunity for informational interviews. When I was a senior, I took advantage of that and I kind of extended myself to my network, asked who knew someone where. Um, I had an informational interview at BuzzFeed, at People. Um, then I went to Spain for two years, but when I came back, I still had those contacts. And when I was hired at People, I already had that connection in the building. So definitely don't be afraid to reach out to people. I know since I've been at Yahoo, I've already had a number of people come in and reach out for an inf informational interview. So it's always nice to start making contacts that way. Since I'm a recent grad, I also utilized LinkedIn a lot. I think that the Career Center really urges all students to find companies where Fairfield alumni are working and I think that's really beneficial because if you shoot someone a message on there you'll have that Fairfield connection and I can attest like I got my job by two Fairfield alumni connections so I think it's a great talking point and it's just really nice to know that all of our alumni are so successful whether it's in Connecticut Boston or New York City there's always a stag present so don't hesitate to reach out I know I get so excited if someone's like oh you went to Fairfield I'm like yes you too so it's a good network This has been wonderful. Thank you. Um, we're going to turn to the Q&A now. So you're going to get questions from the audience. And Professor Sarah Diaz has a microphone. So uh, raise your hand with your question. It's important to speak into the microphone because the video uh, otherwise cannot hear you, uh, your question. So who would like to lead off? Anybody? Yes. Hi, uh, Adam Rugg. I'm a faculty member in the Department of Communication. Um, I'm curious if uh, what y'all found helpful um, 
outside the classroom in terms of things you did working with faculty outside the classroom setting or extracurricular activities or other opportunities um, that, that you felt really sort of helped contribute to your success once you're either finding a job or once you're in your job? Uh, I think something I wish I did more, I did a little bit of it towards the end of my time at Fairfield was getting to know my professors as people uh, because at the end of the day, they're professionals in their space and they know the space um, way better than you do. Um, so I, I wish I did that a little bit more because finding out about that, you know, what, what they're bringing and what their background is kind of helped me understand the industry more as well. Um, and I think, you know, I, I wrote for The Mirror for a couple of years as well and just being aware of what's on campus uh, really helps in going to it. You don't have to go for the whole time, uh, but just being around campus and getting to know as many people, both in your class and other classes, as much as possible is super helpful. Um, so I think for me it was writing for the mirror. You know, it introduced me to a handful of people, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and I was able to write, you know, I wanted to write about sports, so I was able to write about sports. So you, you can find your niche passion within um, the university for sure. Uh, you just need to go look for it because I think that's the biggest kind of like culture shock I felt coming to college is that everything is so planned out from you for for your, until you're in college. College is kind of the first time you can actually step out and see, okay, what do I like? And you have to go find what you like and you know immerse yourself in it. So that's, you know, that's something I wish I did better. I think the study abroad program also really helps you become a real adult because you're literally thrown into a foreign country. And not that you have to fend for yourself, but you're in a foreign country, you try to learn a couple of words of the language and you really grow up and I think that when I studied abroad in Italy that was the time when I really was like okay so this is what life is going to be like after graduation so the opportunity to go to a different country while you're studying at Fairfield and you get to be with your peers you become friends with people you never thought you would know you take different classes that they offer at the campuses abroad so I would suggest everyone to do that just because you're so out of your comfort zone and that'll ultimately help you in the long run when you're tasked with something you're not normally accustomed to doing. When I was a student, I participated also in the Mirror um, Ham Channel. I think it was rebranded to Stags TV. I don't know if it's been further rebranded. Um, and when I was interviewing for journalism jobs, it was really helpful to have like a body of work. So I showed them all my Mirror clips. It was also helpful to have um, Stag's TV experience. Um, video editing is huge in my field right now, and I wish I had more of it. Um, also, as Allison smiles at me from the background, I was very involved in admissions. Um, I wasn't always the most outgoing person, which is kind of to my detriment when you're a journalist and you need to be able to approach people. So it's nice having a background in admissions where I can then get very well accustomed to speaking to crowds of people. Um, so all of those were great to get involved with, great skills that you can transfer to a number of careers. Um, hi, I'm Claire, and I'm currently a freshman here at Fairfield, and I'm a communications major, and I'm currently looking for a minor to pair with communications or another major, depending. Um, I was just wondering how you chose your minors, if you had a double major, and if it benefits you at all today. I mean, I probably have said this already, my choosing my second major was really based on just my interest in something I was passionate about. And it did end up influencing the industry I got into, even though my, my work type of work changed eventually. But I wouldn't be afraid to add something that um, you're interested in, uh, just for the sake of enjoying studying it. Yeah, I, uh, I'm a market, I was a marketing minor. I was also a biology minor, but that's only because I took enough classes by the time I switched to make it a minor. Um, so, yeah, I was uh, so I had the I knew I was going to get the storytelling side of it from from journalism. Um, to me personally, I always I wanted the business side of it um, as well. So having that marketing side paired with the journalism side, there's a lot of crossover. I mean, even in social media, it's 
um, it's, it's a business at the end of the day. So having that side for me, uh, I didn't know exactly where it would take me, but I knew that it would be a good mix of things to you know launch my career eventually. I could say the same for me. So I'm public relations, I was a public relations major, and then my minors are marketing and Italian studies. So I paired public relations with marketing because I think the two go pretty hand in hand. Public relations, I love to talk, and then marketing, I have that creative side, and then Italian studies because I studied abroad. So I think it's just finding kind of like your pairing and what you think is gonna mesh well together. I was a Spanish minor, which was kind of only helpful when I studied abroad, but it did bring me back to Spain two years later. Um, also, just as a side note, the Spanish pro program that I went back with was really great. Um, you do not need to speak Spanish, and you do not need to have an education background to do it. So if anyone's looking for something different to do when they graduate, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, but yeah, again, it's just finding what you're passionate about. Um, because, I mean, English and Spanish don't usually go hand in hand, but it's something to talk about in every interview. I get asked about my study abroad experiences, so it's nice to know that it's kind of just a universal talking point that's always relevant. Hi, um, my name is Dante. I'm currently a sophomore here at Fairfield. Um, this question's for uh, Amanda. I noticed that you mentioned um, you were you had background in finding uh, partners for both the Rangers and the Knicks um, for business. And uh, my question is, did you notice any difference like between the partners you found between the Rangers and the Knicks, or were they in general uh, both uh, similar due to like both being at MSG? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think for new business, a lot is where the companies are spending. So a lot of companies, you'd find that you know they haven't really flirted with the NHL space yet, um, whereas vice versa, a lot of companies are you know they just did a deal with making this up the Stars and the Bruins, and then where their next team that they're coming to. Um, so there is a bit of a difference, especially the categories as well. Um, we could ha you could have a tech category partner that's filled on the Knicks side, but it's open on the Rangers side. So that also alters you know what the sellers are going out and prospecting. So there is a bit of a difference, but then we also have our, we call them our marquee partners that touch all of our properties. So Chase, Chase is a partner of the Rangers, the Knicks, Radio City, um, Westchester Knicks, we have a lot of properties, uh, Knicks Gaming, you know, all of the properties like that. So uh, it depends, there can be crossover. Um, for the most part, uh, I think they're a bit separate though. Yeah. I have a question. I surprised yes. myself. Um, so what do you think the areas for growth are in your particular industries? You talked about TikTok, right? This is mm. a new Plus phenomenon two. that you need a new younger generation to be skilled and to be proficient in that maybe even five people, uh, year, uh, people five years out of college uh, are not uh, ready to, to engage in. What do you think are the next uh, skills, skill sets that people are gonna need as they go into the job market in the coming years? Yeah, I think TikTok's a good example of just adaptability. Um, I think our generation is particularly good at that. Um, we're used to having new technologies that we need to adapt to. Um, just a, something that came to my mind when you were saying that is that we're also in a really unique position of being kind of respected by higher ups at our company because they understand their blind spots and they understand that they might not know technology as well as we do. Um, so I've actually got to go to a number of meetings that I guess in the past you wouldn't have been able to. So there's a huge advantage to be had if you're just prepared, you're thinking about where you can take your company, you have new ideas. If you happen to be fluent in TikTok, that's very in demand right now at Verizon Media. Um, but yeah, I guess it's really just being ready to adapt to the times. Um, whenever we hear of a new social media platform, we're constantly downloading, experimenting with it, seeing what other brands are doing. It's a lot of staying on top of your industry. Um, but yeah. I mean, talent management is a pretty niche industry and we're, it's really sort of business to business in a way because we're working with um, other like um, arts organizations who we're trying to get to bring in our clients. But um, I would say that being on top of, uh, or being um, open to looking at new ways of um, reaching your audiences, it's really a sort of marketing thing, like to um, target the people with the right messages 
and just be open to um, research on that. I think that's particularly important when it comes to you know, staying ahead of the game. I think that's also why the core is so beneficial because while it may seem really annoying now that you have to take all these different classes, it'll come to help you in the coming years because you'll have taken that philosophy class or that chemistry class and all of the different areas that you've been exposed to little by little, you'll find them useful someday. Just off of what Maggie said, you gotta be nimble. Like you can, you can read the job description, get the job, and it's like 90% gonna be 100 other things that they never listed out. Um, so just being able to be nimble and adapt, adaptability and solutions, solution space is a big one. Uh, I'm Matt Tullis. I'm a uh, journalism professor here on campus, and one of you have taken my class up there, um, Alexandra. Um, this question is kind of for Amanda. Uh, we're going to be launching a new major here, a major and a minor here at Fairfield University in the fall, uh, folks uh, on sports media. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and the goal is hopefully to prepare students to go in any direction in sports media. Uh, for everywhere from straight up journalism to broadcast to media relations, that type of stuff. Um, given all that, what, what um, are the skills that, that students that want to go that route really need to work on honing while they're, while they're an undergraduate student? Yeah, I think part of it is like wrapping your head around that like sports, you know, the sports and entertainment business is a 24 seven job. Um, so people say like, oh, I want to work in sports. It's like, well, when are you watching the games? Because that's when you're going to be working. So I think <laughs> it's not a skill, but it's a very, you know, just kind of making that note, you know, known. Um, I think also just, you know, being good with people, having those people skills, going to find the solution, um, being nimble, going out and learning, learning on your own. Um, people are not, you know, going to teach you things. Even when I took this job uh, with the Knicks, I was like, yeah, I know social, but you know, there's a hundred things I didn't know about social. Social, but what can I do about that? Is you know, I can go look it up using the resources you have. Um, so I think just being aware of what the industry really is, um, and then being able to adapt to the different types of work that you're going to get. You're going to have to be in a corporate setting in a meeting with Pepsi, for instance, as a brand sponsor, and then you're going to have to be with the players who, at the end of the day, are 19 years old, uh, and you need to you know, get a selfie video out of them. Uh, so you have to wear a lot of hats. So I think understanding that, you know, it's, you know, you learn so much about like email etiquette and writing and stuff, and then you also have to be charismatic with the people around you. Um, so I think just building those people skills and understanding, you know, how to read a room and when to wear what hat. Am I wearing my corporate hat now or like my casual hat or, you know, because at the end of the day, when you're, for social at least, you're usually asking someone to do something. Uh, so you want to be friends with them because it's not, you know, it's not always fun to have a camera in your face. So I think just really evolving those people skills uh, helps tremendously. Well, we're a little ahead of schedule, but not by much. This has really been helpful, and I hope it's been helpful to all of you. Um, what I'd like to propose now, we're still in the program, is that you come up individually, you come on up and talk to the panelists. And this is part of your networking. <laughs> they work in organizations that need all kinds of people. So no matter what your major is, these are now your allies, your friends, and they will be very helpful to you. Uh, before we turn to that, I just want to say something about uh, a well-known actor. You've heard of him, Tom Hanks, right? We know who he is. And recently, he won a Lifetime Achievement Award, and he drilled it down to three things. Show up on time. Two come prepared, and three, come with ideas. And you've all been 
talking about this, that you need to have ideas and help that organization become even better, right? So it's just something to keep in, in mind. Never thought I'd be quoting an actor, but there we go. Uh, so please come on up, don't be shy, and at least uh, shake their hand and thank them for uh, coming and chatting with you this evening.